Well, hi guys and girls. Here again. Welcome back to the spare room. I wasn't going to actually film this bit. I was just going to do it because it's just more basic shaping or so I thought. But there are a few questions that have been asked about this and a few questions that need to be answered. So this is probably the hardest setup of the lot, I thought, is to cut this, this taper or this, this wedge piece, shaped piece out of here. If we have a look. That's sort of what we've got. And I've done two of them. And I've got another one marked out there. And I've got another one in the machine just set up. So, I guess the critical dimension really, and I've, we'll see in a minute that I've, I've tilted the head of the shaper over at 15 degrees and set that up nicely. So, they're all going to be the same angle here. The critical dimension, I guess, is the length. And I did the first one and got him cleaned up nice and thought, well, we'll just make the others all the same. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. It's really, as long as they are all the same and the parts are reasonably interchangeable, I really don't care. So I just got a, a dowel pin, and that's the only one I could find. It was something that I ordered for a job and they come the wrong way. Um, basically, I... I read the measurements wrong but this is eight millimeters whatever it is and all I've done is put the held the pin down and put that across there and come up with it in a reading which I've written on the whiteboard is 812 thou basically and this one's exactly the same it didn't require a lot of cleaning up and they're not too shabby so I've done two of them and in a minute we'll have a look at, at <coughs> cutting up the third one but someone asked the question about this right uh, or someone made the comment and it's not the only time I've heard the comment it's a fairly regular thing I think uh, about this being the way to break parts out of your T-slot. Now, hold downs, low profile hold downs that work like this have been sold for a long time. And they're not just a new thing. If we have a look, this is quite a long Allen key so I can get a fair bit of purchase on it. But, there's no way with a 3mm Allen key on that 6mm thread that I'm going to be able to bust that out. I'm not that strong. Some people might be and there are people that do things up like that. Um, I've run into them before. And there's no need at all for it to be any tighter than that and there's no way in the world that that's going to move. Um, even under quite a lot of load, that's not going to move there. So. I'm pretty sort of, I guess one way of putting it is, do you put a screw in it to, to, to screw it up or do you put a screw in here to, to pull it up? You know, it's, it's as simple as that. And this pushes it up and puts a fair bit of force on it. Um, block over here and a stud and a nut on top puts just as much force pulling it up. And 9 out of 10 when people set things up in the mill and use T-nuts there's only that piece of force there on the T-nut and even if you put a nut on top it doesn't make any difference because there's still only that bit of force that's pulling up and this is at least twice as long so I don't I think that's a bit unfounded and it might even be a myth I'm not sure but with this little Allen key there's no way in the world I can pull that up so that I'm going to be able to break it. I just can't do it. And this old piece of cast iron here, I mean, that's way tighter than it needs to be. I'm going to, I'm going to stretch the threads before I, before I do any damage to that. This has been set up so there's just a little bit of a lip here. It's about, I think it's about 25, 30 thou, I think I've worked out. Uh, and the jaw which bolts on there, it's got a bit of clearance under there so that clamps down that 
how this works is that the jaw will clamp down on there with the with the bolt and as it comes down the taper it'll push forward and that'll clamp whatever you're clamping which is sitting on the table here nice and tight up against the up against whatever's on the other side so that's the way they work I've got a piece of bronze and as we go I would like to cut that out and make some little jaws for it and probably make them 5 8 which is the same width as the bottom of the tina and that way they're a bit less likely to move around or go sideways and the, the force is probably a bit more direct and a little bit more positive and there's a little bit less pressure on whatever you you're clamping so that's the idea now let's have a look over here at the shaper and talk about that see that's too tight to undo like that there we go and probably that leaves a mark in there but probably it leaves less of a mark than clamping something down with a nut on top so that's my theory or my thoughts behind that probably there's some science out there that's going to prove me wrong or someone else wrong I don't know but that's where we're going with these and I don't think that this little clamp's going to bust the, the side out of the out of the um, the T slot now I've turned this vice round the astute amongst you may have noticed that it was round sideways and that doesn't give you a lot of clamping action against the tool the reason I did that is for a couple of reasons one is that I was clamping these on the long side of the the block so that's why I had it that way around the other reason is that this is a very very difficult vice to tram because there's no machine surfaces running this way uh, and to set it up against the jaws it's a bit of a nuisance this way around um, another reason is that this vice is right in under the back of the stroke there which is where it wants to be because that's the best part of the, the, the machine to use but every time you measure this or you need to get a micrometer in there to measure it you've got to move everything out of the way and then move it back so that's frustrating and slow I have clamped it this way around because there isn't any real way to get it accurate the other way around to clamp the, the short ends so I've turned it around and I've trammed it up pretty good and I think it's going to be alright I've just set that up on a parallel there and mess around I have to wind him out of the way and set it up as this isn't clamped tight yet Leave a comment and tell me what sort of steel I should make a spanner out. It's got to be an open ender. It's got to fit this one and it's got to fit the little one here. Um, this size here. Uh, Stefan has made some suggestions to me and I've had some thoughts about it too. I'm going to make something pretty decent but it only needs to be about 6 inches long. Keeping with the the imperial uh, aspect of the machine now if this is all trammed right our scratch pass on this side should be the same width all the way across and that's quite easy to see a three tooth how error on there with with a shaper just to run the tool along there um, and also along the top should be exactly the same so I've achieved that so when we get along here this cut shouldn't be too far out hopefully now it's just a matter of cutting this down to the thickness which is a quarter of an inch from the top and I'll just use the the depth mark to to measure that and then because this is slanted over and if we have a look this clapper box is straight right, so that there's clearance under this side when we cut this angle and there's not too much rake on this side and this is a at, at uh, 15 degrees so 
we should be able to follow this line reasonably closely down here within about 20 thou and when we get to the bottom I'm just going to finish that downwards and measure it with our, our dowel and our micrometer until we get it right and we'll call this one finished so we're down to the last one there We have a look at that and probably see that 815 so we've got about another three thou to go I reckon that's pretty close if we run back along there at the same setting pretty much that gives us a nice square corner I'm going to check that one last time before I take it out We're sitting nicely there at 812 thou, the same as the others, so I'm pretty happy with that. And that one on the end is the last one. These need a bit of a clean up. I'm going to run a tap through these. Um, all nice and make sure everything's nice and clear and clean. And then probably set the depth stop in the, in the drilling press. And just spot these to take the, the sharp corner off so that they look a bit more presentable. And so they start nice and easy. And I'm going to give them all a bit more of a rub up and just get them check them with a the micrometer three or four times and just just check them over until I get them all looking nice and break all the corners and we'll have a bit more of a look anyway that's them uh, I've given them a good clean up they're really not too shabby I don't think I'm really pleased with them uh, one two three four so basically two sets I've decided to leave that one with the with the chamfer on it because I can't be bothered really making a new one and we'll we'll live with that. It's not going to detract too much from it. No one's really going to notice. It. I'm the only one going to see it. And just a reminder to be a bit more careful. These grub screws I've bought are way too short. They really want to tighten down about flush and they want to stick out about that much I guess to, to clamp down so they're going to have to be sort of that long. There were some thoughts that I had that I was going to make brass plugs for these. I really can't be bothered for a couple of reasons. Um, for one, I think they'll grip better with that dimple on the bottom. And for two, I think they'll they'll um, burr up and won't go back through the hole. And for three, it gives you more surface pressure on on that little spot there in the middle the smaller diameter you go the the more force you need to hold everything so I'm going to leave that and just find some probably 20 mil long 20 millimeter long grub screws these screws will probably screw into about there somewhere
and the bronze jaw wants to stick forward just a little bit proud enough probably that distance there so that when it's at the top it just touch it just comes over the top so that when the jaw screwed right out and it's further up this slope it touches the work there rather than there so you get a little bit more purchase so measure that distance and make these that long on the short side and whether I'll harden them or not the jury's still out you might see a video of me case hardening these I really don't think they need it they're pretty solid the way they are and certainly not the first thing that's going to break so that's that those parts I think more or less done the machining's done we'll see where they go from here um next time we're going to make a start on the jaws so thanks for watching guys and girls and more soon and don't forget to like and subscribe all that sort of stuff share it around and we'll see you next time